Um, hi, Josh. Hey, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> so I just so you know, like I'm still in the Airbnb. Like, so we bought a house, right? Which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, but we continue to stay in our Airbnb. So we have like two weeks buffer, you know, to like make sure furniture arrives and all that. Like yesterday we ended up spending so much time putting together some pieces. Well, Taylor did. I just kind of like assisted, I guess, (laughs) um, and watched him and, uh, yeah, it's been kind of crazy, but now I feel like I have like, I want to buy everything at once, but I'm like, no, I probably shouldn't do that. And just gradually, you know, like put stuff in the house I don't know it's a lot yeah Um, I can imagine it must be it must be quite tempting to want to get it all done in one like one go but (laughs) I can imagine that a that gets very expensive and b it's like that just takes way too long I don't think you have that much time to do that yeah I mean honestly it's one of those things where you just gradually you get like the the main pieces like okay I will say we got a leather couch like a huge leather couch um and it actually just like smells like leather and it's so I I don't know like the word but you know when you get a piece of furniture and it's like Mm -hmm. from and it's just like you literally can smell like the chemicals in it and stuff do you know I'm talking Mm -hmm. about yeah the thing that I like about leather products and like well most wood and leather products is that like there is no smell with it like there is no like chemically like smell it just literally smells like leather you know, yeah. so like I will say our downstairs right now like smells kind of like a cow <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> not, not, a, not um, a bad thing as a car, as a carnivore. <laughs> no, not a bad thing, but um it's just kind of funny. But like I am so sensitive to smells on carnivore. Mm. And that kind of comes down to like we'll talk about this a lot today, but that kind of comes down to like the low toxicity that I try to practice and like yeah. have low tox in my house around me you know, like just away from those scented candles, like away from, you know, just like perfumes and stuff like that. So when I do smell something that's like very chemically uh, or chemically or whatever, I'm usually like, whoa, or like if there's a scented candle, like a scented candle in like a a shop that you go into, we went into Mm -hmm. like a shop the other day and it was just like this like antique shop and they had candles everywhere. And like my sister and I look at each other and we're like, we can't, we can't shop here. Like we literally Sen- sensory can't over here. sensory <laughs> overload. Just all the it's senses just, just coming yeah, straight in. <laughs> you like you want to throw up. Like honestly, yeah. and I've always been like that with perfume. I'd always put just like a dab of perfume, and like I'd go like this to my neck, and like literally it would like make me sick. Being mm. like sitting in class in college, sitting in class in high school, like I would feel sick. Um, so I don't really. I'm. I don't know. Am I, I stinky? But I don't. <laughs> Perfume. I, I, rec- I recently um I had uh, Judy Cho on my podcast oh. um and I was doing some research which I'm very excited to share like in the next coming so week or so you. um yeah. she was she was amazing and um I was doing some research so I was reading her book and she actually said that okay these are natural bearing in mind I'm, I know we're going to get into like the stuff that is very synthetic and not natural but yeah things like lavender oils what they do essential oils essential oils yeah basically they have to say essential oil like lavender okay yeah so a lot of people obviously you know think that essential oils are you know or good for you um all of this stuff but lavender oil essential oil actually uh can mimic estrogen so as a woman if you put a lot of lavender oil on your body your, your, your body oh m- may interpret that as like an overload of estrogen and that will obviously yeah. throw all of your hormones off which, which is very interesting I know my mom specifically she when she goes to like get a, a sports massage or something and and they put lavender oil on she, she her whole body just reacts it's crazy yeah no it's it's so true like so Taylor and I have always used baby um what's it called uh what is the stuff? Detergent. We've always used like very baby detergent since I can remember yeah. my dad had sensitive skin. So in our house growing up, we always used like Drift and like baby organics, like uh, detergent always. Cause we've always had sensitive skin, met Taylor. He has ultra sensitive skin. 
he's been doing the organic like low tox thing pretty much his whole life because his mom and his like aunt were all about it but what happens is when I go to a place like so for example I go to this Airbnb and like obviously the sheets on the beds are not with my detergent right and Mm -hmm. so I'm like itchy I'm like scratching myself like up until like I wash the sheets in like my own detergent that I know my body is okay with. It's like, there's no perfumes. There's no, um, like natural scent or anything like that. There's no warning labels, like do not, you know, digest this, whatever. There's just like, when I have my normal (laughs) detergent, I'm not like freaking out. I'm not breaking out. Sometimes too, people get inflammation when they are, when they come in contact, like with a detergent, that's not good for them. And a lot of times people don't even know, like, they're like, oh, like I'm having this allergic reaction. Like it's not allergies outside. It's not the food I'm eating. It could actually be the detergent that you're using, right? Like it's on your clothes. It's on, you know, your sheets that you sleep in, you know, you put your head on the pillow each night and you're just breathing that thing in. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So I think a lot of people, there's only a couple, like, I guess, detergent brands out there. And like, we can list them in there um, that I would like recommend using that are just like low toxicity, there's no super, super strong chemicals in them. And it's really huge using like, um, like, let's say like hydrogen peroxide and a certain amount of vinegar, right. Mm-hmm. To like clean things, um, and not actually like kill away stuff. Right. Cause like chemicals just get so intense and I, I don't know about you. I cannot handle them. Do you use yeah. like something similar or? Yeah, I, I use, I, I've always had like very sensitive skin as well, like to we're to so moist. pure no i'm just kidding so pure <laughs> so pure. Kidding. <laughs> um but ever since i can remember like i've just had really sensitive skin and one thing about so i'll list the i i, I use I, here in europe i use the neutral it's called neutral and they make pretty decent like um fra- fragrance free detergents yeah. and things like that for your shower for your laundry like they have a whole range of things so I use that in Europe at the moment. I'm not too sure what I used in South Africa, but yeah, you, I mean, hundred percent, you can go meat-based and you can change your whole life and you can be exercising well. And mm-hmm. if you have like these toxins in your environment that you're unaware of, something as simple as like detergent, that's like irritating your skin. Yeah. You, you can imagine if your body is reacting to something every single day, it, it, it must like build up sometime it must get to a point where you just get annoyed for no reason it's just like you just feel Listen, itchy and it's, it's so unbearable. Josh this is the thing this is the qualm I have so like when, when I tell someone like hey like you shouldn't use that deodorant it has aluminum in it right all of the major brands have aluminum unless you get like Tom's organics or whatever right mm-hmm. so people are like oh it's just one thing and I'm like okay well your makeup has titanium in it your makeup has carcinogens in it right your detergent has fragrance in it. It has this, you're eating processed food. Like, although people are like, oh, it's just such a small amount. Like it's not going to affect me. It's kind of like, I've heard people say like the rain bucket, it just accumulates, right? Like if you have all of these different things that are giving you little tiny, you know, exposures in your environment throughout the day, they're gonna add up. And it's pretty, it's pretty crazy to think that it's not going to affect you. You know what I mean? So I I think that some of those things, so there's a brand that I recently found out about called Branch Basics here in the US. And this girl basically just sought out, like she had really bad PCOS where she had all these little like um, cysts growing on her ovaries. And the doctor said it was like, her name's Allison. She's like one of the founders, but uh, she had cysts growing all over her ovaries, right? And they told her like, you will never be able to have kids. Like she hadn't had her period since she was like 15 years old. Um, And she was like, I don't understand what's going on. And so she had an aunt um, whose name was Marilee and she was living like the hippie organic life, you know, like she just knew what was up and she was telling her all these things. And she goes, okay, let's start here. Like what detergent are you using? Right. And she told her and she goes, okay, dump that. Like, you're just going to clean your stuff with like these two natural products. Right. So she started there and then she kind of worked her way down. Like she started getting more clean makeup, right. Uh, clean skincare. She was able to go to the website, ewg.org, which if you go to that and you have a product, whether it's a household product, 
a makeup, a skincare, you can literally put it in and it'll then show you all of the ingredients in them. And it rates them on a scale of how like carcinogenic they are or how bad they are to you. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, titanium oxide might pop up in there just as an example of a makeup product. Um, and it might show up as a nine being like extremely carcinogenic. Right. And then it'll explain why it's, you know, put as a carcinogenic, what, what makes it up that actually makes you have a bad thing. You know, it's an endocrine disruptor, right? It's going to affect your whole body. It's going to eventually affect your microbiome. So there's so many little things, but anyways, she made these changes gradually. You know, you don't have to go home and like throw away all your makeup or skincare products right now, but you can check and you'll, you'll be like shocked. My sister just went through this. Mm-hmm. Um, and she like got rid of all, she goes, I cannot <laughs> believe I didn't know this. And I was like, yeah, it's awesome. Like you can use anything. Right. Um, but this girl, basically Allison, the one who had the cysts all over or ovaries, never be able to have kids. She made these changes gradually mm-hmm. two years later of being consistently like low tox environment. She ended up having two kids back to back. She was able to get pregnant naturally, no issues. And like, it cleared up all of the cysts. She had like a, what are those things called? Like done again, like the, not an x-ray, but the things where they like put the, like uh, all of her cysts are basically gone. I think, you know what I'm saying? We, we're not very scientific on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let the glasses fool you. But anyway, she got that done and all of the cysts were gone and they were like freaking out. Like she didn't know, she thought she had to do something super drastic, right? She thought she mm-hmm. had to like, I don't know, like go and, you know, move to like a remote uh, farm, you know, in the middle of nowhere where there's no pesticides or anything, you know, Um, and you don't have to do that is what I'm basically saying. Like you don't, you can make little changes in your lives and who knows, it might end up being the thing that like, you know, changes you or clears up an ailment you have. Right. Um, It's there's like little changes like that. And um, anyway, so like there's a lot of success stories like that of people changing to a low tox environment. There's also cases where, you know, kids um, are literally there was this one story that I read about this kid that was literally dying. She was dying. She was losing all her nails, all of her hair. They could not figure out they did every single test possible to figure out what was going on. Turns out she was in the environment she was in the toxicities that were there. Um, she was super, super like sensitive to them. And it was just like breaking down. It was erupting like her endocrine system and it was just breaking it down. So once she changed her detergent, once she changed different things, um, they ended up finding out, I think that like the pesticides, um, that were being used to spray like around the house and stuff were like super bad and affecting her. But again, it's different for each person. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're super low key. Like it's just, you have no idea. Um, yeah. and then like you take it out and you're like, wait, did my eczema go away? Like, did my, <laughs> you know, did that rash go away or, you know what I mean? Because like you're yeah. using it, but anyways, there's a lot of stories like that. So yeah, definitely find out what's in your products. That's, that's really interesting. And obviously I would, I would love to carry on the conversation uh, about toxicity and maybe we can dive a bit into like, I think the same applies to like seed oils, like in certain foods that you may not know oh my about, God, yeah. but be before we get there, I mean, you mentioned something which, again, like the gradual process of being consistent over time, you know, sometimes you're not going to, it's sometimes more useful to stick with, let's just say a, a meat-based diet, than every two weeks sort of look, listen to a guru saying, oh, you know, why don't you add a bit of fruits? Why don't you do this, that, do this, yeah. that? And then you're chopping and changing all the time without really sticking to something and seeing the long-term benefit of it. So what I'm saying is it just applies to everything though. Like you talk about the the detergent thing, like you can gradually take away over time, all of these toxic things from your life and that will compound your life will just get better and better and better and better. And it's the same with like sticking to your diet. Like if you are consistent and you stick with it, and you will have moments where you feel shitty and it could just be your body like releasing a shitload of oxalates or doing a, like a toxin dump, they, they sometimes call it. It might not be a bad thing. It might just be your body getting, yeah. getting rid of the toxins. But the only way you're going to find out is if you be consistent with like the thing that you want to do, you know, otherwise it's not going to work, you know. 
Um, totally. Yeah. That's what I think too. And like, I mean, we can go and talk about vegetable oils. And I think that people get like really confused, right? With vegetable oils. They're like, what are you saying? Like, you know, like I- It's a vegetable oil. What are you talking about? Yes. It's a vegetable. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And like, the, the crazy thing is, is that not one of these- quote unquote vegetable oils actually comes from vegetables they come from fruits seeds grains and legumes right they're not actually coming from a vegetable right and so a lot of times people are like well olives and avocados are vegetables and I'm like those are fruits yo they have Mm -hmm. seeds in the middle like those are fruits and again sometimes people use those and those are fine Um, what I suggest, like one change that you can make in your household is you can get rid of the canola oil, the soy oil, the safflower, the sunflower. Again, none of those are actually vegetables. So it's completely misleading to call those Mm -hmm. vegetables oils, right? Like it's completely misleading. First of all, second of all, they go through a very crazy, crazy process of trying to extract the smallest amount possible of oil from these grains, from these seeds, from these legumes, from these fruits, right? And so what happens is they go through a process. It's like high pressure, tons of chemicals used to like break it down, right? So these are made in huge factories. They're trying to break down and use as many chemicals as possible so that they can actually get the vegetable, like, sorry, so they can actually get the oil out of these things, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So it's usually high pressure chemicals, And it's usually not bleaching, but there's usually some type of like washing that happens. And it kind of breaks down the, I would say, breaks down the cellular, I guess, level of these. And so what happens is when you then take this and you digest it, let's say you have French fries and French fries, again, heating up to a boiling point, this, you know, vegetable oil, and you're throwing French fries in from fast food and you're deep frying them in vegetable oil, right? When you eat those French fries or you eat the vegetable oil, what happens is those cells actually turn into free radicals in your body. They turn into free radicals. They are like a carcinogenic, they're heart disease causer. Like they do all these different things. And what happens is because they're in so many different things, different things that are good and bad for you, right? People are just like, oh, it's just how they're cooked. You know, like it's just, it's just such a small thing. Well, I can tell you as someone who like completely cut those out when I do have exposure to vegetable oil, whether it's like palm oil, whether it's whatever it is, I full on like get the shakes and Mm. I get very bad shaking episodes from it, which like it sucks. But like, that's when I know that like I've had too much exposure to it from something and you can even find them in keto foods. Like there's still keto foods that use palm oil, sunflower oil, you know, um, those different quote unquote, vegetable oils. So what you can do is the ones that are like least toxic to you are going to be coconut oil, Mm -hmm. uh, ghee and butter. Like sometimes people argue that like ghee and coconut oil are still like, they're like in these glass jars and they're like mass produced and stuff. But like, I just feel like butter is just like, you can never, (laughs) in my opinion, you can never go wrong with like grass fed butter. Yeah. Like it is such a short like every time you look at like expiration date of butter and you look at like the expiration date of a vegetable oil like I feel like my mom like still has vegetable oils from like the 90s like in her cabinet that are like still good because they're they're the most the most processed thing on this planet and Mm -hmm. so I think people are just like they're like oh like butter like you're crazy and I'm like no you're crazy dude you're eating like gasoline like those vegetable oils. So if anyone's curious, literally look up the process of how vegetable oils are made. Like just look it up. I post them on my story sometime and stuff, but like actually look up the process. Mm -hmm. It is extremely complex. There's so many different factors involved, so many different chemicals involved. And then you get something that actually turns out to be linked to cancer and heart disease. Yeah. And Um, and that's my rant. And and they are literally in everything like yeah. i dare mm-hmm. you to go to the average supermarket go to a walmart go to wherever and just go look in the aisle and go look at every single almost every single packaged item is going to have some vegetable oil in 
And yeah. it's crazy. It's absolutely, it's well, crazy. How are they going to make money? How are they going to make money, you know? Yeah. And how, how are they going to preserve the, like, the shit that they put in there? Is that the shelf you know, life, do- right? Yeah. 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 And I mean, I do get it. That's why a lot of uh, the controversy in the, in the carnival community around carbs is that, hang on, maybe it's not the sweet potato that's causing you to feel like shouldn't gain weight. Maybe it's the added vegetable oil that it's cooked in, or maybe it's not, yeah. you know, the whatever, but th- there is a point to be had there. Um, I know Sean yeah. Baker himself made the argument, which makes sense in my eyes from like a, a, a primal standpoint is that like, you think about bears eat berries in the winter to put on weight. So obviously carbs do play a role in, making you put on I mean, weight wait, wait wait hold on though bears that also are like the animals that hibernate so like they're eating like the smallest amount of berries right to like they they're eating fruit if they can't fruit, get something else exactly yeah. fruits okay i mean myself and judy got like a big into the whole debates around fruits and organs and things like that which okay. i enjoyed but but fruits it does it con it it converts to triglycerides quicker in the liver than glucose it's it is it is like almost so fundamental to our survival when meat might be scarce and the winter might be coming fruit has that ability to make you put on weight really fast i can tell you right now like when i when i eat large amounts of fruit or fructose i put on weight so quickly yeah if if i just eat like plain dairy so just like if I just have my normal meat-based meal and I have like a little bit of yogurt at night for dessert or like a bit of a flat white or something and no fruit, I don't put on weight. I lose weight. So fruit definitely yeah. my, for, for my body, at least I'm not going to like project my own sort of, yeah. uh, my, I mean, my own. Yeah. Yeah. What I was going to say to that too, is that even though people think fruit is harmless and yeah, if you're getting, again, you have to also make sure if you are eating any vegetables or fruit that you're getting organic because going back to mm. the pesticides, pesticides, you know, yeah. even organic crops are next to crops that are not organic and there's runoff, there's pesticides that go over to it. Again, there's the endocrine, endocrine disruptor uh, glyphosate that's actually in the pesticides that's used to spray and kill all the bugs, kill all the animals that are in those crops, right? So even if you think you're eating organic, a lot of times they are next to a not organic, you know, crop, right? So mm-hmm. you, you can't control where the pesticides go. You can put no. little rings around it, which they try to do. Like they put additional crops around it to be more of a barrier in between the other crops. But at the end of the day, you can't control those particles in the air. You can't control them being absorbed into the water and then reabsorbed into the other crops. Yeah. So that's one thing that can cause an issue with me eating berries. That's probably actually my biggest thing why I don't eat vegetables is just because you cannot guarantee no pesticides on them, even if it's organic. So second thing is as well, um, I had a glucose monitor, remember that? And I wore my glucose monitor for four weeks or was it three weeks? I think it was three weeks. Wait, when, when was and this? The- were we acquainted uh, before this? Yes, I don't no, remember. no, we were acquainted. We were. Um, I kind of did it like low key, like trying to like test it. I did it through NutriSense because I wanted to see mm. what spiked different things. And certain creams actually like spiked my glucose. Like if I had a certain amount of cream in my coffee in the morning, that was too much. Mm. I saw a spike. When I had strawberries, organic strawberries, which I do like. Um, I then saw a huge spike in my blood sugar. Huge, yeah. So what I'm saying is, it do you remember matter. like how? Do you remember how like? Oh God, it was a- bad. I probably need to re-download the app to see like my data, but yeah. like it was it was bad. Like it was it was officially called a spike, like when it went up a certain percentage. Um, and so people can argue all the time that hey, like strawberries are natural. Well, actually, they're not because they're you know. Uh, engineered to be like that you know Mm. almonds for example were never how they were like they actually like had to genetically um engineer them and modify them so we could consume them you know you've seen Mm. the bananas where like they show you what bananas would look like (laughs) some weird round thing and then they show you our bananas (laughs) that are like this big (laughs) you know so there's a lot of different things but all i'm saying is that these sugar sugar period we have this is known 
has the same effect on your body, regardless of where it's coming from. The difference is there are some people that can handle the sugars better than others, I think right? Exactly. That's the yeah. only thing. But for most people, you're going to have a, a spike in your blood sugar. They're not going to know if you ate a, three bites of chocolate cake or three strawberries. Yeah, It's going to have the same spike. So I think that's the important part. And the, and, and the, the, the thing to like also emphasize is that it's not saying that having an insulin spike is bad or like um, it's going to like harm you anyway. But for, for a lot of people that are like eating a standard American diet and that are like pre-diabetic because i would yeah. imagine that most people are pre-diabetic what happens is as soon as you have a spike in your insulin what happens is it drops really quickly depending on what you've just had so like um let's just say you had rice like you might spike it might gradually taper off and sort of come down but if you have a high fructose corn syrup drink or or glass of orange juice you're going to spike and you're going to drop so quickly and so hard that in like two hours, you're going to be basically on a sugar crash and you're going to be, eat, and you're going to have yeah. to get that back up again. So you're going to have to eat yeah. again to get that back up. So that's what happens is that as soon as you eat carbs, you're, you're spiking and you just sending your insulin on this roller coaster of the ride for the rest of the day, which is why I'm a big fan is like, if you are training hard and if you do need some carbs, just save them for the evening. Save them for your final yeah. meal. Like save your fruits if you're going to have it for the final yeah. meal that you're going to have for the I day. I was going to say, I did do a test um, and I had frozen yogurt for like the first time in a really long time when I had the glucose monitor on because I was like, you know what? I'm going to try some organic frozen yogurt mm. and like ice cream basically. And I'm going to see, <laughs> I tried to get one that had like the lowest amount of sugar, but still had organic cane sugar in it. Mm -hmm. and I ate it and I didn't have a spike because it was in the evening. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I still, my stomach did not, regardless of my glucose levels, my stomach <laughs> did not like it like at all. Um, but I thought that was kind of interesting that like, if you do wait to have those carbs in the evening, you're not going to start off with a spike, mm -hmm. right? There's going to be other things like the protein and the fat, it kind of like levels it out a little bit is what yeah. I've noticed. Um, so like, that's why you say like, if you're going to have it, have it at night. Um, and I completely agree if you are going to have it, but I mean, you and I are kind of like, I'm not on, I am not supportive of eating carbs. And the reason is they just convert to sugar in your body. And then like, we've talked about the glucose and the protein, like they have to compete to be absorbed or like the vitamin C or other vitamins, sorry, not protein, but like other yeah. vitamins that you're getting that you're trying to absorb are going to directly compete with the glucose. And like, you're going to have the glucose absorbing and blocking vitamins getting absorbed. So that's why I don't like carbs. They're kind of like blockers um, from yeah. actually like getting the nutrients that you're eating. Like if I'm eating all this steak, all this beef heart, um, no. <laughs> but that's, we'll talk about that, but you know, like why would I eat carbs? Because then it's just going to block all these nutrients. And I'm not going to get the nutrients that I'm trying so hard to get from my steak that mm. are just bountiful, you know? And, and what's really like sort of, uh, interesting for me is that carbs yeah i i completely agree it, it like context is is so important but when you when you when you talked about your stomach being sore and you tracking your yeah. your like your sugar spikes i feel like everyone's doing that now in the community so they're so hell-bent on like tracking their glucose spike and their ketones yeah. that they will substitute like organic cane sugar which it's still not the best thing for you, but I'd rather have organic cane sugar than like xylitol or maltitol, all these like highly genetically modified um, sweeteners. Sucralose, that, yeah, the sugar. Sucralose yeah. and things like that. Yeah. I, I'm almost certain that I would rather have like a glass of normal Coca-Cola than some like fake ass Coke that not only doesn't taste yeah. real, but it also has this like fake sugar in that's not supposed to spike your blood sugar. You, my point is, is that people get yeah. so caught up in tracking like on a physical device that they forget about the sort of 
logic behind what they're doing. Like those sweeteners are bypassing the ancient wisdom. We actually speak, myself and Judy spoke, spoke about this, but your body has this ancient wisdom within it to know what's good, yeah, what's bad. So an example is when you were a kid, you didn't like vegetables for a fucking reason. It's because your body yes. just didn't, exactly your body just did not you didn't like them kids kids know kids have the ultimate truth kids know how to tell the truth they hated vegetables but where the line gets blurred a bit is like when you have sugar because kids love sugar is that saying it's good for you no it's not because that is not natural it bypasses your ancient wisdom in your body so therefore yeah don't eat it and like if you've ever eaten a lot of organs, like let's just say chicken livers, I don't know if you've overeaten chicken livers, but you get this really metallic taste in your mouth. It's really, it's quite bad. And that's actually- I am not going after chicken livers anytime (laughs) soon, but yeah, it's it's your body, what? Yeah, don't get me wrong. Like chicken livers in general, I I enjoy having them like on occasion. I think they taste amazing, but you very quickly, your body very quickly tells you, hang on, I've had enough. I don't want any more chicken. And, and, that, and that's probably your body like letting you know that you're overloading on like chicken livers because they have too much like vitamin A or whatever. No, yeah. I think that's the thing. Like I, I will say that I think that's part of it. Like your body having that ancient wisdom and knowing and like kids who are pure, they're not biased in any way. They like don't like vegetables. Like everyone tries to force feed their kids vegetables and it's like, dude, why? Like there's, you know what I mean? Like clearly there's something off here. And I always think about that. And I'm so excited to have kids because like, they're not going to go through having to be force fed vegetables. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Like, you know, so, but I will say there's other thing too, is that like, yes, those things are pretty secret, but there's even like things that are labeled as keto that have palm oil that have malitol and aspartame. So the things that we're talking about are the fake sugars, right? These are sugars that they have made that have little to no effect on your blood sugar, but they are like, they cause um, Alzheimer's, like cancer, dementia. And what happens is they're very just toxic. So if you ever see the ingredients like malitol, um, aspartame, um, and sucralose, those are like hidden names for very fake sugars. And they'll put those in keto products because people are like, oh, keto is trending right now. You know, like we're going to make, there was these bars that I had like probably like two years ago when I was keto. And I remember like, I was like, oh, these are good, but like, they just taste like a little bit off. Well, guess what? I looked at the ingredients and even though they were labeled as pure organic and all that, they were using palm oil, palm oil as the oil in it. And I'm like, what, what the heck is going on here? So even though something's labeled like low sugar, keto, low carb, like all of those ones from um, like the Atkins, for example, like if you look at the back, there's malitol in all of them. Right. So even though like, you're just better without them, you know, Mm -hmm. if you look at something and you're like, this is too good to be true, probably is, you know, it's just like the sugar-free coffee creamers. Um, Yeah where like people go to the store and the first ingredient is hydrogenated uh, corn or like soybean oil. You know what I mean? Or high fructose corn syrup is like the second ingredient. Um, And those things are also like very addictive, you know, like sugar is addicting and, you know, it's not a surprise that, you know, these big food, you know, the big food industry out there is making something addicting. So the customer always wants to come back, you know? So I just try not to have it at all. Because once yeah. I open that, like, I feel like before this, I, I should have been an Overeaters Anonymous, which is like a real thing. Like my, my grandma, not blood related grandma was, she was in it. And like, they would teach certain rules, you know, so that if you did go to dinner, like you didn't overeat or like, if you, you just had that control, you know, which people think again, having like self-control over what you eat is like a bad eating disorder or something, but it's, it's not like you have to have standards for, you know, eating and what you consume and you have to have certain rules or else you're going to end up 300 pounds with diabetes and all these different issues. And, you know, mm. and I, and I, and I think hundred percent agree with you, but, I, but I, I think that satiety at the end of the day is the ultimate, like, like, discipline enforcing factor so if you are eating 
a high protein, high fat breakfast, lunch, dinner, the chances of you wanting to overeat on anything is like yeah. almost next to zero. Like I guarantee yeah. you it is, it is not discipline definitely plays a important role. I know that more than anyone, because I, I t- the, the progression that I went on was low carb, then keto, then carnivore. I didn't like do what most people do now is they go from a standard American diet to boom, carnivore. And they don't, know, they I don't, they, yeah, they don't, but they, <laughs> but I, I'm kind of happy because I appreciated the journey a bit more. And I realized the discipline that it took me to actually quit sugar at the time, even though I was still eating like a lot of carbs, a lot of seed oils, because we're eating at restaurants a lot. And, but that appreciation for the journey just made me realize so much about it and how, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? How the discipline does oh, get you yeah. going, but, but it's it, the it's, hunger. It's, yeah. I think it's the hunger, like what you're yeah. saying. Like my sister and I, she was just here for a week. We would like talk about this all the time. Like it's, it's literally like not giving yourself an opportunity to be hungry because you're fully satiated. Yeah. And you're full, like, and you feel good. Like anyone that I've talked to that's done carnivore and actually given it like a 60 day, you know, trial, um, they don't want to eat another way because they mm-hmm. feel so good. They feel full. They're not like, you know, we've all been on diets, Josh, where we're like hungry. And then that's when you like binge and cheat because you're like depriving your body. So I think hungry is when you lose. Like if you're on a diet and you're hungry a lot, it's time to switch the diet. I'm not telling you to go full blown carnivore, but eat a lot of protein, eat a lot of fat. You'll probably not feel as hungry and you'll be more like satiated, you know? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Like that's, that is the single like biggest factor is like just for breakfast. Like if you can, I don't, to be honest, when you're starting out, I I don't fucking care what you eat after breakfast. You can eat whatever you want, but like starting out, just try eating like no carbs for breakfast, make it like an omelet or bacon, eggs, whatever, huge breakfast, huge breakfast. Whenever you have breakfast, I'm not saying your breakfast has to be like at nine o'clock. If your first meal at the day is 12 PM or one o'clock, that's breakfast. You're breaking your fast. Cool. Have whatever you want. But if you make it a big protein rich breakfast, it makes your day so much easier. 100%. There was this guy, um, I think I've spoken about him before, but his name is Charles Poliquin. Um, he was quite a legend, but he said that the first thing that goes into your mouth in the morning will create the stimulus in your body for the rest of the day. So that stuck with me so much because if you think about it, not only do we live in a society where the first thing that goes into our eyeballs is social media and the news and yeah. shit that's going on, then the second thing is having a nice big glass of orange juice because it's healthy having a big bowl of cheerios and cereal yeah. and then topping that off with a f- double frappiato macchiato at starbucks that's like yeah. 300 400 fucking grams of carbs to start your day most people it's, that's what mo- yes <laughs> honestly it's like the marketing is a problem and to your point though which is so true like even jordan peterson has said this and he's a psychologist right like your first meal needs to be high fat high protein because it's also a mood stabilizer right mm. so a lot of people that are depressed that come to him um and a lot of people that are depressed that come to psychologists if they're a good psychologist they ask you what you're eating They ask you what you're starting your day with. Are you starting with a large frappuccino with tons of sugar? Well, no wonder you're depressed. You're going to have a huge crash. You're going to feel like shit, right? So he says the first thing is start your day with eggs and maybe some type of protein, maybe just eggs to start, right? Um, And the other thing is, I find this so interesting um, that people like don't look into this or realize this. Keto or a high fat diet has been used for years to treat epilepsy patients to avoid having seizures. Mm -hmm. And it also is used to treat or just lessen the lessen the mood and uh, depressed people, right? Like help them with depression, um, increase their mood and their like stability there for bipolar and depressed people. And then it's also used um, for autism, which I actually did not know. Mm. But apparently like they saw improvement in like social development and certain development at certain ages and autistic kids that were given a high fat diet. So like 
I feel like it's so when I talk to someone and like people are like oh you're insane you know like all you eat is fat and protein like when people come at you and they think you're insane it's like and there's no science to prove it I'm like dude like I just gave you three examples of a high fat diet being used and being successful to reduce symptoms to help people with depression autism um, epilepsy right so like there is science out there and this is tried and true because they still do it. You know, yeah. like if people are out there thinking that there's no connection between the food and the way they feel, you're absolutely wrong. Yeah. Absolutely wrong. If you're going to a doctor or a psychologist and they're not asking you what you're eating, get a new doctor, get a new psychiatrist or psychologist right away, because it does start with what you're eating. Like what you're saying is, yeah, like you can also eat amazing and eat a really high fat diet. But again, if you have all these external environmental factors, like, you know, you're constantly being exposed to toxicities in your house, then the diet's only going to do so much. So these so, things are all linked. Yeah. So yeah. Let, I mean, let's carry on on that train because we, I mean, we, we were getting momentum on that, but oh yeah, something as simple as I know you specifically use like special like pans to fry your food oh, yeah. in because okay. you fry a lot and, and so do I what are some of what are the worst things you can cook your food in like a and then b how yeah. how does that sort of affect because that's another thing like cool I'm on a carnival diet that's yeah. great but I'm cooking all my food in like teflon in, in teflon basically yeah. like you you may as well be every morning like having a little tiny glass of like uh, aluminum or arsenic. something arsenic yeah. just oh morning. yeah so here's <laughs> what i would say so the worst are any non-stick types right so any type of non-stick uh, pans um the funny thing is is that bird owners probably know this but if you own a bird any type of bird um, you actually are not allowed to have any nonstick Teflon pans in your house because it actually kills the bird. So, um, which is really f interesting, right? Because you're like, wait, it's going to kill my bird and I'm eating off of this. Like what the hell? Yeah. Um, so like we have a rule and the rule is wherever we go, like whether we're in Amsterdam, or whatever, we always try to get like cast iron right away. I mean, we've been in temporary housing multiple times now, right? <laughs> um, so you need to get either cast iron. So I recommend getting cast iron and I can tell you how to wash that in just a second. And it's super easy. And then also steel. So mm. those are like the two best options because not everyone, um, depending on if someone has disabilities or something, not everyone can lift cast iron. So I like to give a lighter, um, you know, maybe for older people out there, right. Who need something lighter in their hand. Cause it gets heavy. <laughs> so that's, so that's one steel, um, and then cast iron. Right. Yeah. And for the cast iron, the thing that people don't realize is you do not wash that with soap ever. You only, only, only ever like clean your cast iron by just putting hot water on it. And then you just use a scrubber and you get it off and you just let it dry. So it's like the easiest thing. And the reason is it gets seasoned, right? So whenever I get a new cast iron, I've probably put this on my stories a couple of times in like the last <laughs> four months because I've done it twice. Christening um, the cast iron. Yes, <laughs> christening moment, so. the new cast irons, which is funny, uh, but you have to put something super fatty on it. So we'll cook bacon and we'll actually leave the terrible. bacon after sounds, we eat. Sounds terrible. I know, right? Sounds like a well, very, you have very... to make bacon if you get it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we'll put bacon on both of the pans, the cast iron, and we'll actually like, we'll eat the bacon, but we'll leave the bacon fat in there for like a good, like 10 hours, as long as we can until we use it again. Then we'll put the bacon grease, you know, in the trash, not in the sink because it clogs. Um, just FYI to people, like, don't put bacon grease down your sink ever because it actually clogs in there and it'll clog your pipes and you'll have major problems in your kitchen. Um, so we'll put it in the trash. Um, and then what happens is we kind of leave it a little bit. We rinse it off with hot water. And then we basically just use a scrubber and we have like one scrubber that's dedicated to cast irons. That's disgusting. Yeah. And it's like <laughs> darker, it's not white. Um, and so we'll just use that. And sometimes we'll have to scrape some stuff off, but that's it. But I mean, it's, it's so easy. Like you literally only need two pans. Like we have two cast iron pans and then we have one steel pot and the steel pot is literally for, I guess, just like hard boiling eggs. <laughs> like I don't really need much else. Yeah. Um, 
but that's one thing that whether you're carnivore or not, you can do that now. Like go start with one cast iron, you know, build your way up. They're not like super expensive, but they're worth it. Like, mm. you know, a bird dies when it, it's, it's cooked on Teflon, but we're what? <laughs> and you, I mean, you mentioned that the first thing I thought of was I know um, xylitol will kill like a cat or a dog or something like almost instantly. I'm, I'm pretty sure if it's killing a dog, yeah, you don't want to be eating keto bars that are full of xylitol in them yes. or so so that's a pre- th- th- there we go there's a top tip number 36 is before you eat something just make sure if your dog eats it then then it's good to they're eat not gonna you, die yeah. right <laughs> i mean i always have a rule and like people get very like i feel like my sister's always asking me like well you say like i shouldn't eat things that i can't pronounce right the reason i have that rule like if you read ingredients on anything and you don't know what it is and you can't pronounce it, you probably shouldn't eat it. And like the reason is, is that that's obviously chemically engineered and super man-made for anti-caking, for making sure that, you know, the milk doesn't get like um, all like lumpy and stuff. We shouldn't, so, we shouldn't say that too loud because next thing you know, the manufacturers are going to start uh, listening to our conversation and start creating oh, yeah. really easy names to pronounce <laughs> like <laughs> oh yeah yeah we probably shouldn't say that too loud but no, yeah, anyways sure. that's just a rule of thumb because for me to go through all the ingredients like here i'm here to like give you the keys to do your job i'm not mm. going to go through every single bad ingredient and like tell you why you shouldn't eat it maybe just do this the next time you're looking at something at the store and you see an ingredient like uh soy lectin or something that's super common a uh, super common, not comment, um, mm. look it up and see like what the cause is. Maybe you look at it and you read it. It's all like, it's all subjective to you, right? Mm. Like this is not something where like some people are like, Hey, you know what? I love eating my shredded cheese. And if there's an emulsifier in it, and if there's soy lectin in it, that keeps it from caking, I still want to eat it because it's worth it to me. So I just want you to know that you can look up any ingredient that you're not sure about and you can find out more about it. There is an Instagram person called the food babe. I don't know if you follow her, but she's always going through different ingredients uh, that are in different products. And she's saying, you know, is this a carcinogenic? What does this cause? Like, et cetera. So like, definitely just like take a second at the grocery store, look up the ingredient that you obviously don't know how to announce and see what the effects are right? Just because it's in our food doesn't mean it's safe. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just because something's over the counter doesn't mean it's safe, right? Like there's different, there's, I've said this before, every single thing that you put in your body has an effect, right? Whether it's 10 years from now, whether it's immediately after eating it or like, you know, later in the evening, you know, just like feeling sick to your stomach. So every single thing you put into your body has like a reaction it has you know something that happens from Mm. that so just just know that but I think that's a good rule would you agree like yeah that that's a really good uh, response to it um just just knowing how I mean like a brief summary just knowing how everything that you are putting in or are like in contact with like environmentally wise that's creating some sort of stimulus to your biology, whether it's good or bad. It's either going yeah. to very rarely is it, is it going to be like, you know, it's just like neutral. It's going to be, this is either promoting optimal health and well-being, or this is depreciating my health and well well-being. And the more you can, what I love is like the more you um the more you dive deep into your own way of healing through like a meat-based diet and however you enter this realm is fine but you start to figure these other things out that actually make a huge difference as well i mean we've spoken about in previous episodes like sunlight and looking at your phone at night like because all of those things are going to make your body like want to do different things it's going to affect your hormones you know so everything has a stimulus and it's your job to figure out like, is it good or is it bad? You know? Yeah, yeah. I agree. And I think it's so crazy too. Like, I don't know, just like, 
at the end of the day, like there's so many things, there's so many processed foods, there's so many ingredients that are bad that you kind of have to weed through what you eat and figure that out because I'm not going to force you to do it. No one's here to force you to do that or shame you. It's kind of like, Hey, it's your body. If you want to put X, Y, Z in, at least know what it is and educate yourself on the ingredients. Uh, so you know how it affects you, but it really bugs me. I think sometimes too, like when people like give me shit for like going in the sun so much because I'm like, this is like a natural thing. I don't burn. I don't, nothing bad happens to me because I don't eat vegetable oils. I'm not putting like cancer causing sunscreen on me. A lot of those get recalled because they have benzenate, I think is what it is Mm. that was in them. So like Neutrogena and like all these other ones had to like get those off the shelf ASAP, but we had been putting this into like our biggest organ like our skin is like this the biggest organ on our body that you know it does absorb everything right so I went through the thing of like going through all of my makeup and so if you go to ewg.org there's something called like um it's like a product finder and we'll link it for sure I also have it like on my bio in my link tree but you basically just click on it and like any soap anything that you have you just type it in there it, it auto populates, you click on it and then you go to this next page and it tells you all of the things in it, all of the things that might be dangerous. And like, they'll explain why they are right. So it's not someone just like rating a product and not telling you anything. It's like, Hey, I'm going to go mm. through every ingredient on here. Here are the cancer causing ingredients that are in here. And here's why they cause cancer, right? Mm-hmm. Here's endocrine disruptors, right? Here's ones that actually affect your hormones and actually cause fake estrogen. Like we were talking about, like kind of manipulating you to think you're producing too much estrogen and then it lowers your estrogen in your body naturally. So there's all these different things like that. Um, but you can just go through your products slowly and do this. Like I'm telling you right now, once I shared this, once my, my sister, I did this like over a year ago, I did this a year and a half ago. And my sister thought I was crazy during the time, right? She was giving me so much you, shit. You're, on like, a mute you're, those- you're only eating yeah. meats and you're just getting rid of everything. Like, what is yeah, this person yeah. doing? <laughs> um, I mean, six months later, she started eating meat. So like, whatever. But like, I mean, the funny part is, is that people think you're crazy. And then you actually take the time to like put in a product and you're like, oh my Mm. God, I've been putting in like this cancer product in my face for 20 years. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) Like it's bad. It's bad. So there's only a couple of products that I use. And I actually, even though I still use a couple of products, um, I actually just like to use water like on my face. Cause I think a lot of girls are like, what's your skincare? Or like, you know, like you have good skin and it's like, first of all, I've always had good skin, but second of all, like, I just don't do shit to my face. I don't Mm. fuck with my face. Like there's certain bacteria and stuff that's on your face. That is like important. Like you don't want to put a bunch of stuff on your face. That's killing the good bacteria and the bad bacteria. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's so many natural occurring things that happen in your body and like, you know, your oils and all of that, that like you shouldn't fuck with. Like, I, I, I just I just laugh sometimes like and I, and I know like I shouldn't but you can just see like when I was on the train today I was coming back home mm-hmm. um and I just saw this this girl sitting next to me like you could just see her skin just like shouting wanting yeah. some air it, it's like her skin particles were like please let me out of this was she wearing tons of makeup she was wearing so much makeup and yeah I'm not like against like making yourself look good whatever and covering up and making yourself look good that's fine but but when you can see your skin is like literally like just Dying. wanting some air yeah. it just it just needs some some sunlight like start there like <laughs> it's totally <free. laughs> you can't like and honestly like this is what Taylor is. I may have quoted this before, but Taylor's like, if you're ever, this is dating advice for you. I think maybe he said this to you, but if you're, you know what I'm going to say, if you're ever dating a girl and like, you want to see what they really look like, dunk her in like a pool or a jacuzzi. <laughs> so you can like actually see her face. Yeah. <laughs> it's what he said. <laughs> Quote, like get her in the water because yeah. like, then you see like the real hair. Then you mm-hmm. see like you know, the face, like what's actually going on. And like, I would just say like the more makeup you wear, like everyone can do whatever they want. Like, I literally don't care. Like I'm all for, you know, amplifying your looks, like probably like in every event that we end up going to, or like big 
things where it's like a night out or something like that like yeah I put full on makeup on you know I'll still use like a very small amount on my face yeah um, that's like a sheer one you know because again I don't want to suffocate my face and like I, I'll react to a lot of different ones that are thick but like you know you can still like kind of wear full makeup and like reel it back wear like a sheer coverage makeup you know and like you'd be surprised or maybe you just do no makeup for like a couple weeks yeah. and see how you feel because a lot of times people will have certain irritations clear up stuff like that but what I was going to say is that there's just there's so much crap in there and like mm -hmm. in a lot of countries we always compare to Europe in the EU like I told you there's 11,000 uh banned like um ingredients banned for use in skincare and like makeup in mm -hmm. the EU in the U.S. there's only 110 that are banned for use okay what the hell right like you need to like look into those so ewg.org put in whatever product you can still put in detergent you can put in cleaning products because that's something you're around a lot I used to get really bad migraines from different um, cleaning products that we would use in the house and mm -hmm. I'd have to like go outside and like air out the house for like what felt like hours it was bad yeah. Um, but they do find that these certain things um, are linked to migraines, um, are linked to like allergies and stuff and the medical way to test like, so let's say, for example, Josh, you're having like major, you feel like you're having major inflammation. You feel puffy, you feel like you're having an allergic reaction to something like you can actually go and get tested a blood panel. And you can actually get your C reactive protein, which actually is going to be the inflammation that's in your body, right? If you find out that your C-reactive protein is high, mm -hmm. that means there's something that you need to figure out, right? It's either a food you're eating. It's either like, you know, you're allergic to something. Maybe there's mold that you're being exposed to. You don't know mold, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bringing up old wounds, um, you know, or it's like the detergent or the things that you're using, right? Um, so that's one way to start if you actually are like, hey, I need something to actually tell me versus just changing out all these things because sometimes it's not as much. Okay, one thing I want to mention to you, Josh. I, so since being in the Netherlands, right? Like I started drinking dairy for the first time. Like I would only ever put a tiny bit of heavy cream in my coffee, like ever. And that was it. Like mm -hmm. I was fine, right? So I started doing full on dairy, like in the Netherlands. And I noticed like my face was kind of like puffy and it's because of how much of it, like I was drinking. If you have like two to three cappuccinos a day or yeah. two lattes a day, it's going to catch up. So slowly I started noticing like in peak times that I was coming back here that my fingers were more swollen right? Which mm -hmm. is why I don't wear my rings as often as I did. I actually had to wear a different wedding ring, which was like crazy. And what happened is when I was on my plane flight to America from Amsterdam, I took off my ring because I was freaking out that I wouldn't be able to get it off. So I went into the bathroom and I just, maybe I was overreacting, but I was like, this like hurts. And yeah. I was in the bathroom, like with the soap, trying to like get it off, like freaking, <laughs> it's one of my pet peeves to like have a ring cut off like it's one of my sorry it's one of like my like phobias yeah. um and so I don't know if I just noticed it then because I was at such high altitude and it swole like was swollen but I then like kind of was like okay I'm switching to like not whole milk I'm gonna switch to using a2 um you know uh raw milk right yeah. but I still was kind of like you know what? Like, I think I just need to cut out dairy. And I kept thinking about it and I was like, I need to cut out dairy. So finally, like four days ago, I cut out dairy and literally I was like looking in the mirror, a whole layer, seriously, of like my abs felt like covered or like, I, I don't know how to describe it. And this isn't for everyone, mm. but like there was like a, just a whole layer. I felt like I was like, wow, like I feel like I just leaned out or like didn't eat for like a couple of days. And then my, my fingers were like less swollen and my face felt less puffy. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm just not like at this point right now where I am, I'm not going to drink dairy yeah. and just like call it a day, but yeah. it's not the same for everyone. But I thought I'd tell you that because I've been trying to figure out what the fuck was going on with my fingers. <laughs> and I was like, okay, like 
again, we're in a new environment. So every time you're in a new environment, but it started in the Netherlands. So yeah. like, well, if you, it's I the mean, milk. If, if you do think about it, like, again, I know it, this has been said a lot and dairy is designed to take a cow from one to six months and like triple its size. It's designed, it's designed perfectly by mother nature to like make something grow. So if yeah. you, I know, I know if I cut out dairy, I lean out super fast, but that's, that's not my goal at the moment. At, at yeah, this point yeah. in my um, life, I'm focused solely on strength and training for CrossFit. So I do eat quite a bit of dairy and yeah, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not super lean, but I'm not overweight. I'm, I, I'm like, I'm at a, I'm at a stage where I'm pretty happy with the progression of the way yeah. uh, I'm looking and feeling, but I do, I a hundred percent agree with you. I'm the same person. If I cut out dairy, I lean out so quickly, but then for me, the, the, the cost would be that it's sort of like when you, when you weightlifting and training, it's like you sort of need that like little bit of weight to move weights, if that makes sense. So no, I just, and like I, to, I agree yeah. you're, so here's the thing, Josh, your output doing CrossFit, like that's okay for you to do me. Who's doing like one workout a day for like 45 minutes, whether it's <laughs> a long walk. Cause I love being out in nature or whether I go to the gym and I do a weightlifting workout. Like I don't need to do that. Right. Like I'm not doing explosive. Yeah. Like I am not doing CrossFit. Right. And I've seen you, you do pull-ups, you do handstands, like you're <laughs> fucking all over the place. I love it. But what I'm saying is that it was, it, it's like, everybody is different. Right. Yeah. So yeah. like, Hey, I just did the test. I introduced milk or dairy in Amsterdam, gained 10 pounds. And now I'm finally at the point, like, okay, this has to be it because mm-hmm. it's not X, Y, Z, you know what I mean? So like, for me, it's now like, this is an adjustment I have to make to see mm. if it was dairy. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Or see if maybe I am having an allergic reaction to my and, new environment here. Yeah. And and you, to, let's not forget, you were having fruit at one stage. You were having orange juice in the mornings. Do you remember? Oh my <laughs> God. Yeah. So, like, so oh God. exactly. The, the point, the point that I'm so like passionate about is that you, you get these people that have, I know where you got that source from, where they've told you, yeah. okay, it's okay to eat fruit juice, but they, they don't, they don't, they don't have skin in the game. They don't realize that the people that are listening to them may be in a far worse situation than them. Than them. They may be coming from a very heavily a food addict, uh, addictive tendency. Yeah. And to have fruits on top of that is Nuts. I just saw somebody actually just before we hopped on, hopped on the call. I just sometimes go on Instagram and I see what this guy, he's like overweight. He's on the carnivore diet, but he's having a huge glass of orange juice, chicken livers, and according, this is a direct quote, and a dash of maple syrup. How on earth is that going to help you (laughs) Lose, you maple know what I'm saying? syrup okay for those that don't know like the frac the what is it the fracture the the fractionated i can't say this word fractionated fructose is like the worst and those molecules in agave and maple syrup are like probably some of the worst for your body because it's kind of similar to that of like vegetable oil in a way where like it kind of just goes in as a free radical and like wreaks havoc on your body but like oh my god so that's the thing yeah. you guys like I, this is my thing, like meet your heroes in person, right? Like meet your heroes in person because like, I just, I don't, I don't trust like certain people saying that. And also like, I'm sorry, but if you're starting out carnivore and you're starting out a journey where you want to feel better, you're going to have to be pretty strict carnivore, or you're going to have to be pretty strict, like protein and fat and very, very much. So limit your carbs and your vegetable oils and your processed food as much as possible in order to get the benefits and see a change. Right. Some of these people like carnivore Aurelius, we've talked about, like he's done carnivore for a very long time. He now can introduce orange juice, potatoes, different things. And that isn't going to affect him. He also though has what I, my theory, on carnivore Aurelius, we've never actually seen him 
But my thought is that he always had like an athletic build and he was always, he was never fat. Like he was always just athletic. And like, so his body can kind of handle some of those things. hundred percent. Um, and that's not to say like, if you want to eat a potato every once in a while, you, you can't like, it's all subjective. Like it's all just based on you, right? Like the yeah. individual, but all I'm saying is like, if you start in a carnivore and you want to see the results and you're like, Hey, you know what? Nicole's talking about how good she feels all the time. Yeah. It's, it's not from like the strawberries that I randomly will eat and try to see if I like, like last night I tried having strawberries or getting strawberries again. And I had like two and I was like, this doesn't even like satiate me. Mm. And then I went and had beef heart. Yeah. And <laughs> so, tell me about that. Yeah. I've never had oh. that. <laughs> so, okay. I was at the store and like, so here's the thing. I always think about my dogs. So it's really funny. You said the thing about the one additive that can kill dogs because I always look at their dog food and like, we try to get the one that's like the least processed, but there's always grains and legumes and other crap in it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. there's no way a dog, like a dog who has like the highest pH that can like break down any raw meat should be mm-hmm. eating, you know, vegetables. Right. So I've been weaning them off their dog food. And so now it's like, they have an egg and they have some, like, I saw the beef heart at the store and I was like, I'm getting this. It was like $4. And I was like, you know what? I eat all the beef. Like I need to eat the beef hearts because they're just going to throw it away. So I'm like, I'm doing my duty of like eating the whole animal, whatever, sue me. And um, so I got it and I just, I cut thin slices and it had the same consistency of like a steak. And I was just like, okay, this is weird. So like I cooked it like a medium (laughs) butter and I just cooked it in butter like not even a long time, but I did thin pieces. So it was kind of like had a little crisp on it, put salt on it. And I ate that shit. And I was like, this is good. This isn't <laughs> even like, what? Cause liver grosses me out. But like mm. the beef heart, it has the same consistency as steak. Mm. Like literally if I showed you a piece of beef heart next to like a bite of steak, I don't think you'd be able to know the difference. Yeah. Like I really but- don't so that, that makes yeah. that makes more sense to me like they i've always heard that liver is okay if you think about it naturally your liver is the yeah. place where you, your body stores all the toxins so if you're eating the yeah. liver of an animal you're eating the place where this animal stores all of their yeah. toxins it's naturally going to be high in some like very nasty shit the heart is like just a muscle another yeah, form of exactly. like muscle so that makes sense to me. And yeah, I must, I must definitely give it a try sometime. I have You should. <laughs> it, and it's also like, just, I think about it like this, like, I want to be able to eat like the whole animal because eventually like, we're going to get to the part where like, we're getting a full cow shipped yeah. to our house. You know, like I don't want to waste. I just don't like wasting things. So like now my dogs, I said the word, I'm like scared to say it out loud because they're here. Like, and they're just in the house. But, like I said, beef heart last night. And they literally both jumped off the couch and started like running to me. And I was like, (laughs) oh my God, like I've created monsters. Like they actually like it more than steak. But my whole point is that like, if you think we need to eat pure and not processed shit, think about your animal. Like they're not meant to eat. I'm sorry. They're not meant to eat kibble. Like at the end of the day, like they're not. And that might be super extreme, but like, I can't adopt this lifestyle and then continue to feed my dog shit. So like- Every morning I feed them eggs. Every evening I feed them some type of red meat, beef heart, something like that. And yeah. like they are freaking freaks for it. Like they absolutely love it. And and I mean that's a really good point. Like that is my favorite thing. And I've I will repeat it like until I die, is that <laughs> this like it's a way of life and it translates yeah. into so many things. You you it's so difficult to just go meat based and not think about your mental health, your spiritual health, your dog's health, um, your yeah. toxins in your environment, because you just get sucked into this lifestyle of like really just at the end of the day, you just want to have like a good life because you are not only living for yourself. So if I take it away from myself at the moment, my good health means that my mom won't have to worry about me. Her good health. Yeah means that she's doing that not only for herself but she's doing it for me because if she was always sick all the time physically and ill it would affect me so you're yeah. eating you eating well and you're living well not only for yourself you're doing it 
for the good of everyone around you. You're doing it for yep. the, the healthcare system, everyone. So you, it might seem selfish, but you're actually doing a good service to those around you, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think like if you're not healthy yourself, then like how can you interact in the world and create positivity? Like my sister and I always talk about this as we try to associate people that are like bringing positive or like, you know, just good energy into our life, into our world, because like we want people that are constantly wanting to better themselves and be better um, which I think is super important to surround your people. Not, not every single person in your friend group has to be like on a path to being better. But like, if you're not, then it's like, what are you doing? Are you just going to like continue like the way, you, like, I, I just, I never want to stop growing. I never want to stop learning. Like, it's so weird to just be like, I'm okay with how I am. I, mm-hmm. I think I'm good. I'm going to stay like this forever. You know, like, gosh, no, like, I don't, I don't want to, it's just so weird. But as a thought I had the other day, like, yeah, how can I do it. this? <laughs> but also like, if you're mentally not okay, like when you say like that, we eat this way, like it's selfish kind of to not eat this way. You know what I mean? Cause like, if you're mentally unstable and like, there's, you know, some way that you can be eating better to improve your mood, to improve your mental stability, to improve your health. Like that's so important, you know, like, mm-hmm. It's just something that you can do like for everyone. You're not just doing it for yourself at all. But okay, I will say, Josh, I know you just had a full day of work on a Sunday. So I'm like, we need (laughs) to like wrap this up. But what I want to say is that we will put the ewg.org. It is basically any product that you have in your house, whether it's a household product, um, skincare, makeup, whatever it is, you just put that in there and you can find out all the ingredients, what those ingredients mean, how they affect your body, and you can figure out which ones you maybe want to toss. <laughs> um, heads up, anything that has like, you know, major color in it, um, the coloring is not good. So like just a heads up to people. Um, there is one thing, Josh, though, that I will not give up and that's red lipstick. Okay. Oh, yeah. Like, I literally like, no, I know, but I'm like, literally like, that's like my favorite thing when I go out for like a, you know, an event or something. So like, that is the one thing that I will wear to big events that you cannot, you cannot tell me uh, we, to throw we, away. We all have, <laughs> we all have our version of red lipstick, believe me. So it's, yeah. there's, there's certain things that you can just keep because that's just yeah. what makes you be human you happy makes it awesome. exactly totally yeah I'm yeah. but I will say I'll, I'll update you but I think like I literally have like 10 pounds that I'm like wondering what's going to happen with without the dairy because I'm just wondering how that in impacted just other things that I had no idea about so I'll let you know but I'm going to be really pissed yes. because I feel like this is maybe TMI, but I feel like my boobs and my butt is going to like slim down. And I'm like really <laughs> sad about that. Cause That's I'm really all Taylor that. them. <laughs> I know. I know. He's like, don't cut out dairy. Don't cut out dairy. But it is so true. Like I just, mm. I don't know. That's like and, one thing that and, I was excited about. <laughs> and just, just a, I mean, the side note as well, like, I know you probably know this, but again, like even if it's on a Saturday, like it's your cheat meal, like you have some dairy on a Saturday. Yeah. Or like you have a nice flat white when you go out with Taylor to get coffee. Like that's what I do. I like cycle my dairy, basically. It's like a dairy yeah. cycling. I, when I don't train, I don't have dairy. So on my off days, I tend to not have any dairy. So that that helps as well. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's a good point. I mean, I think just where I'm at though, with how like dramatic the effect has been on my mm-hmm. hands and like my face like bloating and like just now that I'm seeing like I'm on day four and I'm like oh there's my abs again okay (laughs) like I think I'm kind of on the right track but also you have to remember like eventually we want to have kids Mm. and so eventually I'm not going to drink coffee obviously if you're pregnant like you're not going to drink coffee right like that would be like are you, are you like asking me caffeine. i don't know no, <laughs> <laughs> no you don't drink know. you don't drink <laughs> caffeine obviously like when you're pregnant right but like eventually i'm just gonna have to cut it out and it's gonna be a really sad nine months right, of like right. not having it yeah so i think maybe i'm just mentally preparing for all of it going away yeah no it's it's all for the for the um the the good of of experimentation and finding things yeah. out but i really enjoyed this episode it was yeah me too yeah it was a lot lots of digest in it and i really enjoyed it (laughs) me too all right guys we'll see you on the next one cheers